Welcome back, everyone, to Nollywood, France. We bring you the hilarious and completely backward journey of Igbo marriage and dowry. Episode 2, written and produced by Cyprian Johnson. I'm still your host, Jeanette Sobilo by Mene. If you thought the dowry list in episode 1 was ridiculous, just wait. In this episode, a daisy must negotiate her way through the most outrageous demands ever made in an Igbo wedding. Will she cave under pressure or will she surprise us all? Let's find out. The room, still ringing with laughter, slowly quieted down as Chinedu's mother cleared her throat. The uncle stopped chuckling and all eyes were on her daisy. The paper with the ridiculous diary list now felt like a weight in her hands. She knew this wasn't going to be easy, but what she didn't expect was what would happen next. Her daisy took a deep breath, her mind racing. She wasn't about to back down. She loved Chinedu, and even though this diary was beyond anything she had imagined, she had a plan. She looked up and met Chinedu's mother on flinching gaze. 15 million naira, a daisy began, her voice growing stronger. A cow, 15 pure white goats, a house, and 5 million Instagram followers. That's quite the least. She smiled faintly, but the tension in the room didn't break. Chinedu's mother raised an eyebrow. Yes, it is. And if you want to marry my son, that is the prize. A daisy straightened her shoulders. Then let's negotiate. The room shifted uneasily. Negotiation was usually not part of this process. But there was something about the determination in a daisy's voice that caught everyone's attention. Even Chinedu's father, who had been reclining in his seat with a look of mild amusement. I don't see 5 million followers as a realistic expectation, a daisy said family, surprising herself with her boldness. However, I do have 30,000 loyal followers who trust my opinion and support my brand. She paused to gauge the room's reaction. The Hankus exchanged glances, and even Chinedu's mother looked intrigued, though she didn't let it show. As for the house, indeed, I don't have one in Chinedu's name, but I do own a successful business that can support our family and build a home together based on our tastes, not just ease. A daisy's voice was steady now, her confidence growing. And about the SUV, let's be practical. I can afford a good car. It may not be brand new, but it will be reliable. A murmur spread through the room. Some of the aunts nodded approvingly. Chinedu's father leaned forward, a smile tugging at the corners of his lips. But Chinedu's mother wasn't so easily swayed. What about the cow and the goats? She asked sharply. And the money? You think you can just talk your way out of that? A daisy paused, a mischievous glint in her eye. As for the cow and the goats, I have a friend who owns a farm. I'm sure we can come to an agreement for a fair price. She grinned. And as for the 15 million naira, well, I may not have it right now, but if you want a partner for your son who is resourceful and smart, I think I've already shown you I'm capable. I am a wife, Materia. Chinedu's mother remained silent, her eyes narrowing as she studied at Daisy. The room was still. Everyone was waiting for a verdict. After what I felt like an eternity, after what felt like an eternity, Chinedu's mother leaned back in her chair and folded her arms again. You are clever. I will give you that, she said slowly. But this isn't just about cleverness. It's about whether you can provide for my son and this family. A daisy doesn't flinch. I can. And more than that, I love Chinedu. I'm not here to buy his love. I'm here because I want to build a life with him together. For the first time, Chinedu's mother allowed a small smile to flicker across her face. She glanced at her husband, who gave her a subtle nod. Well then, she said, her voice softer but still commanding. We will see. We will see how far your love and your resourcefulness can take you. You have one month to prove yourself. If you can meet half of these demands and show us you are serious, then we will talk about the rest. Adeze breathed a sigh of relief, though she knew the other part was yet to come. She nodded respectfully. Thank you. As the meeting came to a close, Chinedu finally spoke up, walking over to Adeze and taking her hand. You handled that better than I ever could have. You handled that better than, than I ever could have. He whispered with a grin. Good luck with the goats. Adeze laughed softly, squeezing his hands. I think I will need it. What will happen next? Find out in the next episode.